Sure. We really, really are blessed. We're blessed to have such a big group. Um, really blessed to have parents that have shown up tonight. Um, essentially to hear and get some insight around how to get your sons ready for high school. It says a hell of a lot to me. So I want to say to you from the outset, parents, welcome and thank you for taking the time just to start your boys off on the, on the right note. So I, I, I have been asked uh, to try and keep things light-hearted. Um, so I'm going to put that up front because I, I just, I'm not that guy. So I'm, uh, bear with me. Um, we really believe in this school, as Mr. Payne said. This is about the kids. To teach the kid, not the subject. To coach the kid, not the sport. That really is where we want to get to. So I'm very serious, and I treat the, the, these bits of information very, very seriously. So to the ladies that asked me to try and be lighthearted, I'm sorry. <laughs> to begin with, um, I can only assume that um, Again, the ladies that asked me to introduce a few points here, there were some questions that have been repeatedly raised, um, I'm presuming by fairly OCD moms. And I've been asked to address those questions. Um, I again presume from the very serious ladies or very light-hearted ladies that uh, they're tired of trying to answer them individually. So I'm going to attempt to to quickly deal with those. The first one is, is quite important to me and it will come up in the speech. Um, please don't dare drop your poor sons at the front gate. It is a matric privilege. Do not start their poor journeys off feeling embarrassed. The starting point for the young guys is here on Hofmeyer Road. They will be met by leaders. They will be met by their teachers. Um, the 200 meter walk up to the school will be good for them after a little extra or a little uh, slower COVID few years. So please make sure they don't get dropped at the, the front gate. A very strange one, when you read uh, the information that you've been given, what does TTS stand for? Timetabled sport. In this school, we believe in the holistic approach. So there is a double period where your boys will have to do sport. The beauty is they get to choose the sport that they want to participate in, and it's TTS because it's during the timetable. So it's different to extracurricular sport. Regarding um, being absent from school or perhaps having to leave school early during the course of the day, it's a very, very simple process, but please honor the fact that it is our process. When you hand your kids over to us, we are in loco parentis, we are the parents. You need to get permission from us to have them released. And please, we ask you to honor this because your connection with your boys is, is next level. WhatsApp from mom to boy, I hope you're having a good day. WhatsApp back, probably not from the boy to the mom, but you know how it works. Um, please don't sidestep our process by a boy saying, I don't feel well, and if he does say that to mom, that's great. Contact the school, and an exit will be arranged, and that exit form then gets signed by the form head and the teacher that the boy, the class that that boy is in. Um, and it really safeguards our boys, so they, they get signed out properly. Um, and these are processes that will be new to you. So the form teachers will tell your boys uh, that process, but just so that you are aware. That brings me to my next point. What is a form head and a form teacher? Uh, quite simply, a homeroom teacher, a class teacher, um, that's what we refer to as a form teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the first point of call for you as parents. If you're missing a little bit of information, uh, you're a bit concerned about something, the form teacher in grade eight is your first port of call. If you don't get joy through that experience, the next step up is the form head. And the form head, uh, you met some of them today, they really control the culture and the flow and the atmosphere of the grade. Um, but your for, first line of call with regards to a large, large part of the information that you need will be through the form teacher. 
The, those form teachers will make contact with you at the beginning of the year. So you will receive an email from them um, just so that there's a link uh, formed straight away. Please bear in mind that there's going to be 26 boys in the class. So limit your communication to things that are really, really important that you need to know. Okay. Bear in mind those form teachers are subject teachers. So we'll be teaching during the course of the day. Lockers, all of you should know about the locker. You've purchased them already. Each of your children will receive a brand new locker. His responsibility is to make sure he takes home his lunch boxes. I'm going to say that again. Please make sure he takes home his lunch boxes. It's quite a hard task to walk down the corridor and, and a locker which has 12 lunch boxes in it starting from day one. Please label them and make sure they come home. The only really important bit of information you need about the locker at Guy Seriously is bring a lock for it. And day one, that's really all you need to do. The bits and pieces, and it just, it, you have peace of mind. Um, so please bring a lock. Indulge me a little bit, because this next one, I wasn't sure how to answer it. So do we cover books? So the answer is yes. The colors of the rainbow for each subject with contact paper and flowery labels. <laughs> Where in high school, your boys, if they need to cover their books, and some teachers will insist that they cover their books, but your boys will know. And if they're not, don't have great dexterity, by all means, give them a hand. But Let's wait and lean into what the teachers ask them to do. It's a great place for them to become being responsible for what is in their bags. Moms, did you hear that? You're going to battle, I know you are. Right, digital devices. Quite simply, ladies and gentlemen, it's the age we live in. Um, we, most of our boys do have cell phones. If you as a family don't want your kid to have a cell phone, please understand our work is not done on the devices. Uh, all our classrooms are equipped with great projectors. Uh, there's a link into the internet there so the teacher can utilize it. Your kid will not be prejudiced. And please also understand that if you want to remove the cell phone for disciplinary reasons at home, he's not going to miss out on work because that's the first thing he's going to say, but mom, I can't do my homework. <laughs> he can. Okay. Um, no doubt there will be some more questions along the way. and. Um, I'm, I'm fairly confident that they will all be answered um, by your kids, and if you have no joy, please feel free to get a hold of the form teacher as your first line of call. Leading into the actual presentation, there's a couple of nuggets that I, I really believe for our young men, our young men in this country, and certainly our young in, uh, men in this school, we need to assist them with. Um, I know I've used this line, and it'd be interesting if you guys just think about it for a moment. How many of you, uh, through COVID times, through the fact that your sons are tired of primary school and are excited about going to high school, sort of used the line, come on, please, my boy, you've got to get more mature. You've got to be responsible. You know, next year's high school. You, Mom and dad aren't going to have to be, be around. I know, as a father of three, two, two of my boys have been through the school already. I know I used that line. And I, I think it was quite effective in motivating them to finish primary school strong. Um, but there's a little hidden message that, that goes out that I, I really want to highlight. We do not as a school believe in keeping our parents at arm length away. We really, really do believe that our high school journey, um, your boys' high school journey, is far more successful when the teachers, when you and your sons journey are together. The hidden message that you will somehow be less responsible for your sons, maybe less hands-on, couldn't be further from the truth. Couldn't be further from the truth. Children aged 1 to 13 automatically seek out authority figures. It's amazing to watch a primary school match. You would have experienced this. 
And you'll see that a tackle or a shot at goals and the child turns to look for the significant authority figure in that moment. Did you see that? It's powerful. Sad to say, 13 years through the teens, through high school, your sons turn their attention away from authority figures and their focus becomes the approval of peers. Please bear in mind, the teachers are in a class of 26 boys whose focus is not authority. That is why, and this is a serious moment, teachers age like this, and I'm actually only 23. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why you're laughing. This is the most magnificent stage for your boys. So we don't want you to be scared by that, but we want you to be aware that the shape and the form of how you parent, if you haven't had older siblings, is going to begin to change. And we really do want to partner with you. We will run a grade eight talk and we will run a grade, eight, a grade nine talk just to equip you and help you understand the different stages that your boys are going through and that they're not monsters in those stages, um, that this is part of the beauty of their, their journey. So please make use of those, those talks. It's been difficult to do them, um, but now as we're opening things up, um, it is, those talks will definitely be on offer. The focus of the presentation essentially is to equip you to assist your boys to navigate um, high school, to help you better understand a whole lot of things about how to make it a happy experience, a fulfilled experience, and so forth. So very quickly, I want to go through three things that affect happiness and wellness and uh, prosperity. The first is genetics. And it's affected, 50% of your happiness is affected by your genetics. Your chemical makeup, quite substantial. Circumstances that surround you vary our happiness by only 10% only 10%. And the third factor is choice. Choices like diet, exercise, rest, relationships, purpose, account for 40, the 40% 40 variance in the happiness and the well-being of your young men. Please spend time with your sons engaging in conversation around choices that will help them build their dream and help them de develop a capacity for their own futures. It has been far too easy during looting, during COVID times, to focus in on the 10%. Far too easy to focus in on a circumstance which actually only controls our wellness and our happiness by 10%. Your son's days are his life in miniature. What he does today is actually creating his future. The words he speaks, the words he speaks, for those of you that have never looked at your son's WhatsApp chats, please do so. The thoughts he thinks, the food he eats, and the actions that he makes are all adding up little bit by little bit to create his future. They are shaping who he is ultimately going to become. The small choices lead to these giant consequences over time. So please, from day one, remind your boys there is no such thing as an unimportant day. I find it quite sad when some of the matrix leave the school and they fill out a questionnaire which helps us refine and define who we are and correct things that maybe need correcting. And There's always a portion of boys that have some regrets. And it's always just the little decisions that accumulated over time. So don't let your boys be those guys. To reinforce this point, I want to make you aware of the fact that your sons will receive 15 formal reports from the arrival in grade eight uh, through to matric finals. So if he arrives at school with a 50% average for mathematics, which very few of your sons did, um, all he has to do is to work consistently harder, in fact, 2% harder, 
every maths lesson that he goes to, 2% harder every time he does maths homework. And report one will read 52%. Report two will read 54%. Report three, final report for grade eight, will read 56%. And if he continues to work 2% harder at the end of each grade, uh, at the end of grade nine, he will be at 62, uh, 68 at the end of grade 10, 74 at the end of grade 11, and 80% in matric. See, as you spend your hours, so you create your years. And the reason why I bring that up is that often parents get so excited. I want their boys to achieve highly. And I'm bringing this up for a particular reason, that I think there are gaps in the curriculum and there are gaps in your boys' knowledge because of COVID. We are putting mechanisms in place to try and address those. But I think often parents send their kids in with this expectation around results. Please don't misunderstand me. We're a school of high expectations. We believe very strongly in that. We really, really do. But I would like to just make you aware of the fact, when do you want your kid to peak? Oh, it's not grade eight. Please remind him to focus on process. Those of you who have sons who are sportsmen are gonna arrive Oh man, dreams of being in the 14A, soccer, rugby, hockey, it doesn't matter what it is. Please understand that he is going to be competing with boys from 42 other primary schools who all have first teams. And I don't mention this to scare you, I mention it to highlight one thing only, the choices we make. Help your sons to focus on the process of improving they will become young men that finish high school playing in top teams and achieving top results. Work ethic trumps talent over and over and over again. So please make process a priority for your sons. Lots has been said about the nature and the characteristics of the, uh, this generation of kids. Uh, lots of it's been said that isn't particularly flattering. Um, Simon Sinek, one of the leading uh, leadership gurus at the moment, is quoted as saying he doesn't believe that they are selfish, he doesn't believe that they're entitled, he just thinks that maybe they're impatient. And they are a generation that has not had to wait for anything. Everything's been at their fingertips. Communication with friends, collecting homework that they'd forgotten. Just take a picture, your friend sends it to you. No harm, no foul. I remember getting on my bicycle and praying that school was still open. Collecting my homework because there was gonna be trouble at the fingertips. Order food, source new information. Teacher says something that maybe is slightly controversial. You have gotta be careful these days. So, ma'am, you're actually wrong. You've got to know your game. Everything's at their fingertips. The things that aren't easy for our kids, us as a generation have made easy. I don't know why, but our generation in particular has hovered over our kids, has mowed the lawn in front of the, the path that they're walking down. We've just made it super easy. Leadership guru John Maxwell said most of the top, the outlying successful individuals have all had to battle through something. And I highlight this not because I wish a struggle on anybody, but I do believe that at the heart of every successful person is a grit, is a resilience, um, it's a heart and a mindset that life is gonna be tough and it is uphill and we are gonna just get fit running uphill. The challenge to you as parents, maybe moms more than dads, but, but possibly both, is to not be afraid of things being a little bit tougher at high school, a little bit harder. It's a beautiful place for your boys to begin to grow grit. 
to begin to get stronger. My prayer, and I know along with most of the teachers that, that I consult with, my prayer is that the boys leave our school having a foundation, that their actual straps are hit after school, not necessarily at school. The success of the kids at school, we, we think, is just hygiene, something that every school should do. The real measure of the school should be what the boys achieve after school. And a lot of that has to do with this understanding around grit. Whether your boy is going to be uh, a president, a CEO, a social worker, a doctor, and a good husband, uh, a great father, he's going to need to practice grit. Because you guys as parents know all of those things are tough. It doesn't go easily. There are five factors that I want to share with you, and I know you won't remember all of these. Um, my wife over there, who's in charge of communication, um, at home and here for me, um, <laughs> will make sure that it is distributed uh, to you. But there's five things that I think are really important as parents, and we're talking about a partnership here. We can do some things at school, but if they're not sort of reinforced or understanding is reinforced at home, it makes it a little bit difficult. And so please don't go home and go, hmm, Mr. Coombe said. Please don't do that. Because I think we need to build some currency with our kids around some of these conversations before we go there. And perhaps you yourself need to work on some of the areas. The first is to delay gratification. And I'll start with that because I'm not good at that. Um, I never have been. Um, delaying gratification is an, is an issue for me, and I overindulge on the food side. Yes, dear. Um, but it's critical. If your boy wants immediate satisfaction and his whole world is designed around immediate, he's going to miss the opportunity to grow grit. He's going to miss the opportunity to practice the process. Because when people practice a process, they come out trumps over and over again. The second point is to recognize that there are consequences. Third point, and I'm being a bit cheeky here, don't take yourself too seriously. Get over yourselves a bit. Not you as parents, your boys. Because they will come home and their world will be intense. Help them just detox some of that stress. Be accountable and most certainly grow optimism. We live in the most incredible country. It is full of problems, but it is magnificent. So we really believe in grabbing a hold of the idea that you, we are responsible for growing an optimistic outlook. The grit conversation leads into discipline, and I'm that serious guy having controlled the discipline for a number of years at the school and the expulsions and that whole process, I do need to say that we take discipline incredibly seriously. We have an incredibly well-crafted uh, code of conduct. As Mr. Payne mentioned, we've had legal minds from our governing bodies over the years speak into those codes of conducts. They are good. So read them. But I do need to say this. We don't want to lean in to the code of conduct. We want to lean in to have a conversation with your son. We want to rely on the currency that we build through our relationship with you as parents. And we really believe that disciplining your boys at the end of the day could quite easily simply be a conversation. The stopgap is obviously the, um, the code of conduct. I don't want to scare you because we also don't expect your boys to be perfect. We really do not expect them to be perfect. We as a school are not perfect. We are not perfect. And when we're not, we have to own it and we have to apologize. We don't expect your kids to be perfect. We don't expect them to walk in here uh, being fearful that they can't put one foot out of line. But we do expect them to become responsible, to learn how to become responsible, and most certainly to be accountable. I want to encourage you as parents, please don't allow your sons to manip manipulate you into allowing or supporting them to bend or break the rules. 
those of you that do know me, I have an incredibly rebellious mind. I uh, don't believe in sticking to the status quo very often. And I'm sure some of you have got sons like that. The advice I'm giving you is not for protection of your sons, it's for protection of you. When you allow your sons to manipulate you into bending or breaking rules when they're only in grade eight, you give your mantle of authority up. You begin to hand it to them. And it is far too early for that. And when they get to become grade 11 boys or 12 boys, you want your own mantle of authority with them to be intact. So I want to charge you and encourage you to help your boys obey the rules. Um, some of them I look at and I think, wow, that's crazy. But there are reasons. There are reasons for them. We're a big school and we need those rules to keep it working well. For the moms that are a little bit afraid of, um, sure my boy is the only one from his school, I don't think that's the case, but, but there's only a few from that school. Uh, for the moms that are, maybe my boy is quite timid and this is a big school, uh, just very briefly, when your boy arrives at school, and we'll elaborate in a grade 8 par uh, parent talk around this, but when he, when he arrives on day one, without a doubt, he's going to display what I call a level of power in boys. In girls, I would call it maybe self-esteem. Um, why powerful boys? Because they're little warriors. They all want to be. Big or small, they want to be warriors. They have this level of power inside of them that could be a little bit low, could be a little bit high. Um, when they arrive on day one, that level of power, they're going to suppress it. And they show it. They show it. They walk in and so, ma'am, so they don't really want to draw too much attention to themselves. The other end of the scale is the grade 12 boy. He's walked that path five years down the line. He shows it as well. What does it look like? <laughs> the interesting thing, the thing I want to share with you, that this is normal. That grade 12 walks around the corner <laughs> and he walks past some of the rugby guys and the headmaster and they go from to morning sir <laughs> just as quickly so that level of power fluctuates allow them to be a little bit nervous there will be a honeymoon period where that nervousness is amazing for teachers everybody's so well behaved but it doesn't last the cheeky guy begins to emerge and that's okay okay so just to have your minds at ease we understand boys we understand this power we want your boys to leave this school being powerful. Please don't misunderstand that. Our definition of power is somebody that is comfortable to elevate the status of somebody else because he's powerful. So we understand that game and we understand how it works. Please don't be afraid of it. It's a beautiful journey that your boys do, do go on. I'm heading towards the end and I want to share a story with you which just really, really illustrates how fragile our relationships can be between parent, teacher, parent and kid um, and so it goes on. So as I've mentioned already, the boys are not allowed to get dropped off at the main gate. And um, on one particular morning a dad dropped his son off. Uh, I won't mention his name because some of you might know him. Um, not uh, grade 8 parents um, and he was late he was quite late so he took a chance my boy's in trouble he's going to be late zooted up to the main gate no harm no foul nobody was really around except one solitary leader with a clipboard and um, dropped his son off nobody said anything driving out um, as he was sort of reversing he noticed the leader had stopped the boy and written his name down, asked him his name and written his name down. And as he drove down Wandsbeck Road in the rearview mirror, he noticed another boy, obviously the same family crisis and was late as well. And uh, that boy just sauntered straight past the leader. <laughs> the leader didn't even sort of worry. And, and it really ticked the father off. It, it, it upset him. He phoned the headmaster of the time and he, and he was all right. How can this sort of thing happen? this different treatment. So the leader was called in and when he was questioned, his words were, yes sir, that's right. 
I did stop that boy. And I did ask him what his name was, and I did write his name down. And so the other boy, yes, I did let him walk by. But sir, I knew his name. <laughs> and the, the really cool thing is the dad took the time to phone to say what has gone on. We would far rather have an uncomfortable conversation with parents. We would far rather just try and muddle through it together than have car park talk. It is better, it is healthier for us as an organization, and it speaks to cultivating optimism. So we have said that we don't get everything right. When we don't, please give us a, give us a call. In closing, I take every single opportunity I can. The DNA of a Griffin, the DNA of a Westful boy, the DNA of successful people. I'm going to share this with you very quickly. This is given so that if your boys begin to practice these principles, will begin to take their potential and will begin to grow that potential and ultimately they will begin to identify a purpose that is, uh, is in a design for them. Firstly, value each other. Value everyone. And we have a very good program that breaks down, um, maybe that sounded negative, but in, is inclusive of all the boys from all the different schools. There's a design in that so that we can begin to learn who everybody is and there's uh, a place to value everybody in that. Practice civility. Practice politeness. If your boys aren't sure what that is because it's a changing, it's a changing landscape, please teach them. Act intentionally, remembering that everything worthwhile is going to require a bit of effort and is uphill. Always try to exceed expectations grow daily because that effort compounds. Choose a positive attitude, add value to the people around you, lead by example, and please be a catalyst for transformation. Once again, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for giving me the privilege of being able to share just some insights into the start of your boys' high school career. Um, just to remind you that this talk will be posted if you need to take something from the talk at a later stage. Um, thank you also for the awkwardness of walking into a venue when we haven't actually been practiced in this in a long time. And it is awkward. You could see for everybody that arrived early especially, uh, well done to you guys. Um, and well done to all of you just for reconnecting with people. We pray that it, it just continues to be this sort of space. Before you leave, Mrs. Campbell, Marge, who all of you would have had some dealing with at some point, is the head of admissions. Um, she has an envelope for you with some extra information. Please read through it. Included, and this is quite cheeky, but I can go there. COVID has done our boys a disservice with regards to their physical conditioning. Um, we have some of our, our physical conditioning guys there. We've got a great team of very knowledgeable people. And please don't think I'm talking to you about this for sport. Quite simply, healthy bodies or healthy minds, everything works in sync. There's a little program in there. Please make sure they do it over the holidays. Um, it, it will be amazing for them to come into the great art space having begun a little but deliberate process of improving performance. In addition, Mrs. Campbell has got um, some information with regards to three bus routes. Um, there is a bus service that is available. There are limited spaces available. If you want to make use of that, um, please speak to Mrs. Campbell. So that just to be clear, the bus route is Durban North, South Coast, and the highways area. Please, the bus picks up and drops off at school to one space. There's no stop-offs in between, etc. Um, they're a very set route for, for very 
for very basic reasons. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have a safe trip back. We really look forward to day one when your boys arrive here on Hofmeyer Road, not at the main gate, and they'll be warmly welcomed and will begin their five-year journey at Westwood Boys High School. Thank you very much.